Hello there, science explorers! It's Justin again. We're back at the park, and today we're filming the lively lives of plants. Now that I'm outside looking for them, I can see plants everywhere. The grass below me, the trees above me, even in the water over there. The earth is full of plants. Let's get a closer look at some plants to understand just how these guys thrive. We know that plants are living things. They grow, reproduce, breathe, and respond to their environment. But how exactly do plants do all of that? Let's observe some of the plants in the park to see how different they are from us and from each other. We can start with the trees behind me. Trees are the tallest plants on Earth. All trees grow to form big, thick stems made out of wood that we call the trunk. Trees can produce all sorts of things, and seeds are one of them. This pine tree creates pine cones, which are full of the tree's seeds. The seeds will then spread out and form new trees, which is how many plants reproduce. Other trees have different ways of spreading seeds, like inside the fruits of this apple tree. We can see ferns growing under the shade of the trees. Ferns don't create seeds. Instead, these plants create spores, which are smaller and lighter than seeds, and float through the air to find a new place to grow. So, different plants have different ways of creating new plants. But something they all have in common is that they all reproduce. Living things can also respond to their environment, right? Does that mean plants do too? Let's check out these flowers growing near the ferns. Do you see how these flowers move? Psst, Mia, could you, uh, could you speed up the video? Thank you. When the sun comes out, the leaves and flowers slowly perk up and face the sun to soak up its light. That means plants do react to their environment. Just very, very slowly. So, we've seen how plants reproduce and react to their environment. That's two of the characteristics of living things. So, how do they get the food and energy they need to grow? Or take in air to breathe? Maybe if we figure out what the parts of these plants do, we can understand how these parts help them to grow and breathe. I made some sketches of some of the plants we just saw in my field observation journal. What do you notice that all of these different plants have in common? Most plants have the same three important parts, roots, a stem, and leaves. The roots are usually underground, keeping the plant in place and absorbing water and nutrients from the soil. Leaves are found at the top of the plant, the closest part to the sun where they can best absorb its light. And the stem holds all of the parts of the plant together. It also acts as a transportation system between the leaves and the roots, sending water, energy, and nutrients throughout the plant. So, how do these parts work together to feed the plant? Kind of like the way we cook by using a recipe, plants need to get the right ingredients. There are three key ingredients that plants use from their environment to create food. Pause the video here and record your prediction of what these three ingredients are in your field notes. Plants need water, sunlight, and air in order to carry out photosynthesis, the process in which they transform sunlight into food. Let's investigate how the parts of the plant work together to make this happen. All plant leaves contain a special substance called chlorophyll. Mia, can you zoom in on this leaf? Thank you. Chlorophyll gives leaves their green color, and one of its jobs is to absorb sunlight, which is then converted into energy for the plant. The leaves also absorb carbon dioxide, something that's found in the air we breathe. The leaves combine the carbon dioxide with the water absorbed by the roots to create sugar which the plant will use as food to help them grow. Now we've seen how plants reproduce, grow, and respond to their environment. 
But we're still missing one characteristic of living things. How do plants breathe? When humans and animals breathe in, we take in oxygen from the air. And when we breathe out, we release carbon dioxide. Well, what do leaves absorb from the air? Yeah, carbon dioxide. And after plants create sugar, they release oxygen back into the air. This reaction does the earth a huge favor. Breathing in too much carbon dioxide can be harmful if you aren't a plant. And all animals, including us, need oxygen to breathe. Oxygen is a natural resource that humans and animals need to survive. And plants help to replenish that resource for us. Natural resources are things found in the environment that humans did not make but we can use to survive. Thinking about the plants that we've seen so far, what other resources do you think plants can give us? Pause the video now and think of three other resources plants provide in your field notes. Plants give us food. We saw how trees can produce fruits like apples, but are other parts of plants edible too? This park's community garden is growing lettuce, which is not a fruit, but a leaf that we can eat. We also eat the leaves of herbs like basil and mint, and the stems of celery and asparagus plants. Uh, let's move on before I get too hungry. Earlier, we were looking at tree trunks. What did we notice they were made of? Right, wood. The tough, hardy stems from pine and cedar trees can provide us with wood. We use wood for building everything from houses to furniture, as well as making paper and cardboard. Plants also provide the materials we use to make clothing. Do you recognize this fluffy material? Cotton plants create soft white seed coats that are then spun into thread. Cotton thread is used to make almost everything we wear, from our socks to our jeans and t-shirts. These are just a few of the many resources that plants provide for humans. Plants also help the animals that are also living in their environment. How is this bird using plants as a resource? It used plant parts like twigs to build its nest on a tree branch, so everyone can stay dry and cozy. It's using the plants for shelter. Look, this beaver uses plant parts too. Can you tell what it's building? Beavers use tree branches and trunks to build their lodge homes and create dams in ponds and rivers. Ooh, while we were exploring, Mia found two living things to observe. Can you tell if they're plants or not? The first is a lily pad, which she found floating in the water. The second is a mushroom, which she found growing in a pile of leaves. Pause the video and make a prediction in your field notes on whether either of these things is a plant or not. The top part of the lily pad looks a lot like a leaf, but do they have stems and roots? Well, let's dive in to investigate. We can see that lily pads have long stems that connect their leaves, what we call the pads, and the roots. The roots reach deep down into the soil at the bottom of the water to soak up those nutrients and keep the plant from floating away. So if you guess that a lily pad is a plant, you're right. <coughs> lily pads are aquatic plants, which means they grow in the water, usually in ponds and wetlands. They provide a nice place for other living things like insects and amphibians to rest. What about this mushroom? Well. I don't see any leaves to start with, and nothing looks green either. Without leaves or chlorophyll, can a mushroom use photosynthesis to make food? I don't think so. Instead of getting energy from the sun, mushrooms, or fungi, absorb nutrients from once living materials like dry leaves or tree stumps. Mushrooms are living things too, but they are not plants. So. Now we know that plants are living things that look and show how they're alive much differently than humans and animals. They require sunlight, water, and air to grow and breathe. 
Plants also provide us with a lot of important resources that humans and animals use every day. You're probably using something made from a plant right now. Thanks for helping me and I learn about life on Earth today. Remember, the wildest discoveries are yet to come. Until our next journey, science explorers! Hey, hey.